How's it going out there, YouTube? My name is Jesse, and I'm back for another comic book video. And this is the month of Fawcett Comics. That's right. For the entire month, for the entire month of May, I'm going to be doing nothing but Fawcett comic book characters. I'm probably going to go over the more well-known ones because. I haven't really covered Fawcett very much. Now, if you're not familiar with Fawcett comic books, I actually did a video where I did a pretty good in-depth of who Fawcett was, um, how they got started, where they went to, and uh, what ultimately caused the close of Fawcett comics. So, if you're interested in that, I have done that video. I've also gone over some lesser-known Fawcett comic characters, and I've also covered uh, Bullet Man. So, this is going to be the ones that I haven't covered yet, probably more of the most famous ones. Now, I was going to cover the Marvel family first, but I have put that off to the side because I'm waiting for something first. But I will end up getting the, fa the uh, Marvel family this month, hopefully in the next video, but we'll see. So, since I'm not going to be doing the, fa the uh, Marvel Family in this video, I am going to be doing a video of villains. That's right, Fawcett comic book villains. Now, the villains that I'm going to be covering here have made multiple appearance in the comic books. So, they're not going to be obscure villains. They're going to be ones that um, have been pretty well known so two of the villains I know most definitely are Fawcett characters and one of the villains which will be the last one I covered has actually had appearances in the DC comics and I know that one for a fact so three villains one has definitely been moved on to DC so let's get this video started we will be starting this review with Captain Nazi. Captain Nazi, real name unknown, first appeared in Masters Comics number 21 in 1941. Obviously, the publication is Fawcett Comics. He was created by William Wolfolk and Matt Rayboy. A Captain Nazi would appear in many different publications. He appeared in a number of issues of Master Comics, Captain Marvel Juniors, and Captain Marvel Adventures. Let's see. Captain Nazi was perfected to be the perfect specimen for Adolf Hitler. He had superhuman strength, superhuman speed, and superhuman stamina. He could fly. He was invulnerable and had enhanced senses. He is actually responsible for the creation of Captain Marvel Jr. In a fight with Captain Marvel, Captain Nazi was punched so hard that he was unconscious and landed into a lake. Freddy and his grandfather were able to lift the man into the boat to prevent him from drowning. They did not realize that he was Captain Nazi and when he woke up he killed Freddy's grandfather and broke Freddy's back. Um, Captain Marvel would bestow some of his powers onto Freddy and this would cause him to be able to to have the power to become Captain Marvel Jr. He mainly went up against Bullet Man and Captain Marvel. Upon doing further research, I have found out that Captain Nazi did go to DC comic books. I wasn't aware of this before now. Um, and in the DC comics, he was given... He was actually given a name where he was unknown in the Fawcett comics, but we're only covering Fawcett, so I'm not going to go into the DC uh, storyline right now. If I do a full review, then we will cover that, but this is as far as we'll go with the Fawcett comics. 
Coming up next on this review is IBAC. I believe that's how it's pronounced, I-B-A-C. Okay. IBAC, Stinky Prit Whistle. I'm, I'm not making that up. First appeared in Captain Marvel Adventures number 8 in 1942. Obviously, Fossa Publications, created by Otto Binder and C.C. Beck. Ibac would appear on the pages of Captain Marvel Adventures and America's Greatest Comics. Let's see. Um, apparently in the notes here it says that Ibac shouldn't be confused with Sabak, which is a Captain Marvel Jr. villain, and their their origins are very are very similar. I'm not covering Sabak, just Ibac. Okay, Stinky, Print Whistle, he had planned to blow up a bridge so he could rob a train that was on the tracks. He was thwarted by this by Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel would unintentionally throw him off of the bridge, would be then rescued by Lucifer. He would later make a deal with Lucifer where he would sell his power, sell his soul for power. His power would be similar to Captain Marvel and where Captain Marvel got the power of heroes, um, Stinky Print Whistle, Ibac, would get the um, power of the most evil men in history. Okay, let's see. Ibac would gain superhuman strength and stamina, and he would change by basically staying Ibac. So the people he would get the power from is I for Ivan the Terrible, and that would be Terror. Um, B would be Caesar Borgia, uh, Cunning. I wasn't familiar with Sierra Borgia either. Apparently, he was an Italian politician and he was very cunning and was also trying to undermine whoever was in power. Um, Attila the Hun, A for fierceness, and C for Caligula. Um, if you know anything about Caligula, I, I, I knew about his access I, I knew about his ex, excess in sexual perversions but I didn't realize how cruel and sadistic he was until I looked him up but that's where he gets cruelty from the last one we will cover on this list is the weeper the weeper Mortimer gloom first appeared in masters comics number 23 in 1942, Fawcett Publications was the creator, or was the uh, publication. The creator is, is Mac Rayboy. He would appear on the pages of Masters Comics and Bullet Man. He also apparently appeared on Mary Marvel Comics. Uh, the Weeper was a villain and a murderer. And he was the arch villain of Bullet Man and Bullet Girl. He was called the Weeper because he weeped over his victims. It is a weird thing. Uh, the Weeper wore a top hat and a blue opera cape. He carried around a walking stick and was armed with tear gas. He has no superpowers. Now, this character did go on to DC Comics, but I don't think it was the Weeper that appeared in Fawcett. In doing some of the research, it looks like the original Weeper had died and the son of the Weeper um, teams up with Dr. Riddle and goes on to be or to go up against uh, Mary Marvel and Bullet Girl. Um, this is 
apparently the one that teamed up with um, some of the DC villains and went on to DC. I, I don't know if any of this is confirmed, but he said at one time, my father, the true weeper, is dead, sob, but I am carrying on with his name. So, whether or not DC decided to take the character and make a new person is not yet, I, I can't find any confirmation on that, but that appears to be the DC and we're just doing the cover of Fawcett come, uh, Fawcett, uh, history. Well, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you didn't mind that this was one about villains and not heroes this time. Hey, villains have had their mark in the comic books as well. They've shaped it just as much as the heroes have in some instances. In other instances, they're just there for a storyline. So, this is the first video of the Fawcett Month. And uh, we'll continue with another one next week. Until then, I'll be seeing you.